But that is only the beginning. This next route has so many bios, we're gonna need to have a mid route cut. All right, let's go through this pretty rapid fire. Useless. Also useless. Also kind of useless. Only really fast, but also not really that impressive. Useless. Actually surprisingly strong. Useless. Also very strong. And now for part two of the bios. Your swarm is Dodrio. Fast, decent physical attack, but also pretty bad everywhere else. Jerem! This thing has two forms, sunshine and not sunshine form. Both of them are the exact same, and the only difference is that when in sunshine form, your ability flower gift activates, where in double battles and triple battles, your attack and special attack... I think that might be a typo. I thought it was... Well, either way, your stats are boosted by 1.5%. And... This line is used unless you get a female, which is only... Which Combi is male one out of eight times. So, if you want Vespaquen, you're going to be hunting for it. And it's a tanky Pokemon on a horribly untanky type combination. I hate this route. Why? Mostly because there is only one useful thing on this route. And that is the ability to get TM Energy Ball. It is east of the Pokemon Breeder. The, there are two Pokemon Breeders on this route, and they will give you Citrus Berries, or rather, a Citrus Berry for defeating them. Tia, oh, Tim, I thought it was, okay, so it wasn't 52. All right, well, my brain is bad, but that is something we are going to teach. Brick break, earthquake, sludge bomb, game charge, the plus sweep, overheat, focus blast, energy ball. There we go. I want to teach this to Taranza. It's going to give him something to use against ground types. We haven't really used Sucker Punch, and I can't really think of a time we're ever going to use it. He's pretty much going to be outspeeding almost everything, and there's really no purpose to having a physical move on a special attacker. So, we're going to be going with that from now on. There are also going to be a couple of tiny mushrooms that regrow on this route. Though, because they are tiny mushrooms, their only real purpose is selling fodder. And of course, selling fodder items are kind of useless by this point because of how much money we have. There's also a revive right here. So I believe there's an item in there if it's winter, but I don't remember. I'm just gonna... I'm gonna just fight you later. Ow, ow. There's also a couple of other trainers. There is a double battle. I believe there are two double battles here. But... Now... Welcome to... Lacanosa Town. Nice little peaceful place. First stop on make is go into the Pokemon Center. Because... If you talk to the girl on the second floor... And show her your badges... She will tell you who you <laughs> David Lillipup 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 and Panpour. <laughs> she will tell you the team you used to beat all the <laughs> Lillipup Lillipup Panpour and Lillipup. I forgot I kept the Lillipup for that long. It's like bad with Darumaka's Navy Panpour Lillipup. Aw, that was when we started to get rid of the Lillipups. But yeah, she will tell you the teams you faced the gym leader's with. I like that. And also, because of the fact that we have this on Sunday night, we can actually do something. The girl over here... Do you know about Grisadia flowers? Or, I don't know if it's Grisadia flowers or Grisadia flowers. I just always call them Grisadia flowers. In, in certain times, bouquet of flowers just give people show their gratitude and feelings of appreciation. If you have a fateful encounter shaman, that girl will give you a Gracedia flower. Because we do not have shaman, and because it's pretty much hard to get a fateful encounter shaman, we're not going to be going over this. But, I want to head over to the northeasternmost corner of the wall, because 
This is the business executive's house. My work is very busy, so I'm only here once a week. When it's lonely, if it looks cute, souvenir, I'll give it to you. He will give you a berry every single Sunday night. They are not great berries, but they're something. But that is pretty much all there is in Like an Town aside from one rather peculiar thing. Have a look around. Do you see any people outside? No. And we'll be finding out. Like in this town, here everyone lives according to the rules, from the moment they awake to the time they go to sleep. At night, a scary monster comes out of the big hole, so you have to go home and be good. The Pokemon is always running off to play on its own, but it comes back before it gets dark, so I guess it's okay. If you can't guess, everyone in Lacanosa Town returns to their house in the middle of the night because my grandma loves old stories. They're always listening to their really long stories. Sometimes, if it's night, she'll fall asleep right in the middle of a story. It's okay, though. She's not... She's not only healthy, but she's a free-spirited grandma, too. Aw, oh, even Roughnecks got a soft spot. <laughs> well, well, what do you want now? Just make sure I listen to you. Yes, okay, I'll tell you. Vienna Lacanosa Town is a big hole in the ground. That hole, way in the past. I'm so tired. That hole was a, a big crash down inside. It was big scary, really scary. In order to hear her full story, you have to talk to her during the day. And I think I'm going to take a cue from that grandma and uh, go to sleep. Because it is late here. Or rather, it's very early. But, well, hello there, young traveler. Would you like to hear my old story of Lacanosa Town? Bear with me, because I'm an old lady who likes to tell tales in the old-fashioned way. There is a great big hole in the back of this town. A long time ago, a huge meteor fell from the sky and made the big hole. A very scary monster was hiding inside that meteor. People say that monster appears in the village at night, bringing a cold wind and stole away Pokemon and people. So the villagers built big walls to keep that monster out and made a rule that no one could go out after dark. Of course, nowadays no one believes in such things, but you know, even now, there are people in this town who stay inside after dark. Isn't that strange? I guess old stories and old traditions have some influence on our current life. As you can see over there, there is a hole. Who knows, maybe that's where we'll be going next. Alright, and for this next little stretch of what we're going to be covering, I recommend you go into your PC and you get a Pokemon that has a Strength, Cut, and Surf. So, let's get moving. On to Route 13, and there's a lot of bios to go over. Tangalai! This thing is pretty bulky everywhere aside from special defense. It's got good HP, really solid defense, and actually pretty decent mixed offensive stats. The only real downside is the fact that it just doesn't have good special defense or good speed. Not bad. Swallow! This thing is fast, but pretty much nothing else of note aside from high speed. Crobat is a bit better. It's got similarly very high speed, but decent mixed offensive stats, considering the fact it can get move called Nasty Plot. It also has a pretty bizarre assortment of good special moves like Heat Wave, Shadow Ball, and Sludge Bomb, and also all the special flying moves. Lunatone is the special oriented of the next two Pokemon. It's got decent special attack, but kind of laughable everything else. Solrock is the counterpart of it, being more physically oriented. Same things apply, just with physical instead of special. Driftblim is very bulky considering what its defenses are. It doesn't hit particularly hard, but it can take hits decently well, and with things such as Minimize and Stockpile, the thing can take hits a lot better than you'd expect, even if it can outright avoid them. Absol is a decent physical attacker. It's a glass cannon, but it's also not that quick. 
so I wouldn't exactly count on it for good glass cannony dark type damage. We've had Crooked Out for a long time, it's just better. Bayonet, or rather Shuppet, is your Swarm Encounter. Pretty much the same things apply to it as with, uh, as with Absol, just instead we place it with Golurk, who has a better secondary typing. They're both pretty glassy, but Bennett has lower physical attack, and it has a decent special attack considering it can use Shadow Ball, but it's not that great. For other encounters, you have Pelipper. This is by way of surfing. Decently bulky from a physical perspective, but its low HP kind of mitigates this. Not great, however, it does have access to Drizzle, so if you, if you have a rain team in mind and you want to Thunder Spam, this might be your choice for a Pokemon. Starmie! You can get this by surfing as well. It has pretty great speed and decent special attack. It doesn't take hits the best because of its low HP, but it can take them well enough to get the job done. Just don't go for Illuminate. Cloyster is one of the Pokemon you can get by fishing. This thing is physical bulk given form. It also has access to a little move called Shell Smash. So that's kind of terrifying. Skill Link also means that moves like Icicle Spear will hit four, uh, hit five times at all, all times. However, you can only get this as a Shelter since it is a Stone Evolution. Corsola is gotten from surfing spots, and it is laughable. Mediocre bulk, mediocre attacking stats, and slow on top of that. So what's the thing good for? Nothing. Well, that is all we have here in Route 13 so far. That boulder over there is why you're going to want Surf. I recommend you get cut so you can sneakity sneak 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 past these. And there's an item over here. Let's see what we got. Max Ether. Not bad. There's also a couple of TMs on this route. One of which you have to do a little bit of a side quest for. And, speak of the girl... We can go, there's three grams on Route 13. So, we have to look for her grams. The first of these is by an old man north of a fisherman, northeast of a fisherman, so let's get working. I probably should have been doing this over. Here we go, northeast of the fisherman, looking for a gram, are you? Take this, follow my head, take this to a wingle. We got the first gram. The next one is going to be held by a Parasol Lady, south of another Parasol Lady. Thank you. Letter from the sky. You always dropped it. Please give it to Wingo. I believe you can actually get these before you uh, talk to the Wingo, but I'm not going to risk that to try to find out. And the last one is on a cliff, so I will be having my repo wear off and reapplying that. But... Yeah, it's not bad. You're actually going to be getting a TM for this, and it's a not terrible TM. It is one that I did consider having on uh, Swoop, because Swoop does learn it by level up. But I decided against it because it's not really my way of play. We found Gram number three. Well, Gram number two, but we got it in uh, number three order. Let's see what this is. This is a Razor Claw. This boosts the critical hit ratio of a move. It is also used to evolve a certain Pokemon we're going to be getting in the next couple of routes. To Wingo, thank you. Reek, thank you. Help Wingo a lot. Wingo sings a song. And it goes on its way, giving us... Looks like it left something behind. TM89 U-Turn. This is a move a lot of Pokemon actually learn. A lot of flying types get it. And it just allows you to go back into your party. It's basically a physical version of the move Volt Switch. It's not bad, actually. A lot of Pokemon do get this move, so it can be a bit more helpful than Volt Switch. Over here, there's a Treasure Hunter. What am I doing? I'm hunting for treasure! Treasure hunting is fun. Sometimes things get buried in the sand dunes. Actually, I found something. Well, I'll give it to you. We got a Dragon Scale. He can give you a number of type of, or other Pokemon-specific items, things such as evolution items. He can also get you another lucky egg, which is very intriguing. My husband can teach some Pokemon the ultimate move. I'll tell you their names. The Blazing Fire-type Pokemon, Charizard, Typhlosion, Blaziken, Infernape, and Emboar. The Restless Water-type Pokemon, Blastoise, Freligator, Swampert, Empoleon, and Samurott. The Quiet Grass-type Pokemon, Venusaur, best grass type. Meganium, Sceptile, Torterra, and Superior. 
These are the elemental hyper beams, the ultimate moves, which I teach. These are, of course, as I just mentioned, clones of hyper beam, frenzy plant, blast burn, and hydro cannon. These are very powerful moves. They deal the same base power as as a hyper beam. However, they are same type attack bonus induced, and they also can get type effectives and as, as, as I mentioned, same type attack bonus. They can be much more powerful than, of course, hyper beam for that reason. However, I don't like the fact you kind of have to recharge the next turn, so we're going to not be teaching that to David. Even though that would be a massive kick in power, I kind of like having access to go Leaf Blade and Giga Drain in the same turn, just because I like the little bit of HP heal. This is why you're going to want Strength. I'm going to move this boulder to the side, and Eyesore, your Strength is coming in handy, because there is an item over here. I think this is TM29 Psychic. Yeah, you got to go a long way for this move, and it's not that good in my opinion. It's a good move definitely, but I wouldn't say it's so good for warranting needing to be in post-game for it. I mean, there's a lot of Pokemon that are Psychic types that really could use that, and also over here there is the Electrizer. We do not have the Pokemon capable of using the Electrizer yet. Over here you're going to want to Surf because there's some Double Grass, but there's also some items. Or rather, I believe, an item. See, I think it's hidden. There are hidden items on this route, and they will... They are pearls, and I believe a pearl string. Also, a rare candy right there. They will reappear every couple of days. So, it is a decent money grinding spot, especially to sell to the item maniac who buys the items for higher prices. Max Revive is always welcome. Is this the other thing I was hoping... Oh, no, we already got the other TM. What's this one, then? I forget what this is. This is, uh, Deep Sea Scale, alright. I believe we got the Deep Sea Tooth a while back, so now you can fully evolve your Clam Pearl into either form, if you so chose. Though, again, I don't really recommend Clam Pearl at all. Let's see, over here we're gonna surf, and I believe the only way to get to the other thing is over here. Oh, it's a hidden item. Oh, it's a, that's a water thing. It's not a water thing, it's a, a pearl, probably. So, yeah, definitely you can go over here, get these items, and sell them, but we're probably so stacked on money at this point, we don't really need them. And over here is a Prism Scale. This is how you are going to evolve your Feebas into a Milotic if you found a Feebas instead of a Milotic. Over here, just want to knock this boulder out of the way, and I will go head back to town for some last-minute changes to the team, as well as, actually, let's check our Pokeball Supply. Actually, before we head off to the thing I'm going to do next, there are two other items we can actually get right here. You're going to want to go behind the teacher's house, the one for the elemental hyper beams, use a repel, and bring a Pokemon that has access to surf so you can move into this area. I thought this was on a different part of the route, but I was wrong. It's actually over here on this little stretch of land. I think that there might be a hidden item. Yeah, there is a hidden item right here. It's a pearl string. There we go. Okay, that's really the only uh, hidden item of importance here, but head into this little house. There's an ace trainer, or rather a veteran. Found this plate while using the move dive around on Delave. You want to use it? You can have it if you like. The splash plate. Splash plate, another one too. Here, take this. The Draco plate. These are clones of the items Dragon Fang and Mystic Water. They just boost the power of those moves by 20. Actually, wait. I remember there was a point where they changed those effects of the items. Oh, it's uh, also by 20%. Okay. So they are clones of one another. I forgot that they were 10% in Generation 3 and earlier, not Gen 4. They changed it in Gen 4, so both are now 20%, but good to know. So, that is really all I wanted to show over here. I recommend you stock up on Pokeballs, because where we're going next is... We don't have date. We don't have swoop, of course. I'll meet you guys back at Lacanus Town. Like